Well, folks are streaming in for this event, anti-fascist klezmer from the shtetl to the streets. Very excited to have folks here with us this evening for a musical event, which we don't get to do very often. I'll give it uh, a couple of minutes. We had lots and lots of people register for this webinar, which is really exciting. So, um, so welcome and thanks for spending part of your Thursday evening with us. Uh, as I said, this is anti-fascist klezmer from the shtetl to the streets. Uh, a really, really special event being put on by Independent Jewish Voices Canada. We have some wonderful performers with us tonight. One band, two solo performers. I'm going to introduce them in just a little bit, but I'm going to set up the event for everyone just so um, people kind of know what's going on and know the rundown. And then we're going to get into some music and some storytelling. So again, thank you so much for being with us. My name is Aaron Lakoff. I'm the Communications and Media Lead for Independent Jewish Voices Canada. And uh, I am speaking to you from unceded Mohawk territory in Montreal. And uh, we, as Independent Jewish Voices, IJV, do a lot of different things. Um, we, we've been around for over 10 years, and we were the first national Jewish group in Canada to endorse the boycott, divestments, and sanctions movement in solidarity with the Palestinian people. So fundamentally, we are a Jewish group that believes in principles of peace and justice in the Middle East, and we work uh, towards that goal of a free Palestine and having, you know, an Israel-Palestine where people live in full equality. So um, I imagine many of you folks out there also feel the same way we do. I would highly encourage people to go to our website. I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna share my screen just so people can, um, can see uh, our, our website right here. I'll just show you a couple of things uh, on our website. I thought I had it pulled up before, but I'm gonna pull up our website, ijvcanada.org. And so what I would really, really uh, encourage people to do is we put on these events always free of charge. We do a lot of webinars, especially, you know, during COVID. We can't meet in person, which is, which is tragic. And so um, we come together on platforms like Zoom. And uh, we're always going to do these events for free. Um, but if, if folks can donate, I know it's, it's hard times where you might be on the CERB, you might be on that stimulus check that our American friends get, which I know is not a lot. Um, so if you don't have any money to donate, please don't fret about it. But if you can make a donation, there's this donate now button at the top of our page. So you can kind of treat it as like a concert ticket, right? Tonight we are out at a concert hall. You got a picture, you got to imagine it. Um, because the, you know, the, the people playing for us aren't going to be able to hear your applause. You can maybe put applause in the chat after, after people do uh, songs. That might be a fun thing actually. Um, but you know, just think, well, if I were to go to a concert, I might spend 10, 15, 20 dollars on a ticket. So if you can donate that amount to IJV, it really helps us to continue to put events like this on. And also, of course, if you're interested in joining as a member, you can click the join button on our website. If you want to just sign up for our newsletter, of course, you can you can find a link to do that on our website as well, too. So check out IJV. Um, what I did want to say about this event is uh, and I'll, I'll kind of go into it in a little bit more detail in just a little bit, but this event was inspired by a lot of different things in my life. Um, but it's actually kind of the basis for this event is part of a, a really exciting upcoming book uh, edited by a very good friend of mine, uh, Cindy Milstein. And it's going to be coming out in, uh, in December of this year. It's called There's Nothing So Whole as a Broken Heart, Mending the World as Jewish Anarchists. And so uh, it's a collection of, of writings coming from the Jewish anarchist milieu. And, uh, and basically this, this panel, a lot of it kind of uh, is the basis of an essay I wrote uh, in that book um, about radical klezmer music. So there we go, from AK Press. There's nothing so whole as a broken heart, the book. You can check it out. It's coming out December 8th. So, a little story that I wanted to share before we get into it in terms of um, 
you know, the, the kind of common thread that I think runs through all the artists today. Maybe I should introduce the artists, actually. That, that's probably a good first thing to do. I'm trying to like cover all the bases. So um, we'll start with uh, Brivole. And I'm so, so thrilled to have them here. So Brivole is a Seattle-based anti-fascist klezmer folk punk trio who braid together oral history, Yiddish language, contemporary and old country music genres, American vaudeville, and visual arts. Brivole is pronounced Brivole, and it means little letter in Yiddish. And representing the band tonight, we have two of their members, Stephanie and Maya. Thank you both so much for being with us. Thanks for having us, Aaron. Yeah. Oh, and I should say, I mean, I mentioned y'all were from Seattle, but you're joining us from Seattle. So thank you for coming from so far. Yeah, we're on unceded Duwamish and Coast Salish land right now. Thank you. Ensuite, next we have Jeff Berner, who is joining us from unceded Coast Salish territories in Vancouver. And Jeff is a Jewish Canadian accordion player, singer, songwriter, novelist, political agitator, who has been traveling the world for the last 15 years or so. He's played in bars, cafes, festivals, and the occasional stadium. He's performed in 17 countries and on national radio in seven of them. So welcome, Jeff. Hi. Hi. Thanks That's for like, having me. Thank you for being here. That's a wonderfully yellow background that you have there. Thank you. And uh, last but not least, of course, we have Ira Conan Temple, who is a multi-instrumentalist, songwriter, and cultural worker. And Ira is joining us today from Brooklyn, New York. Ira's recent credits include a choriness for Fiddler on the Roof in Yiddish and music director of Incident at the Weston Playhouse, Great Small Works, Muntergang, and other cheerful downfalls. And Ira was the founder of the radical traditional Yiddish music group, Sibylle. Ira, thanks so much for being here. <laughs> Little way. Um, okay, so back to a very brief little bit of storytelling before we jump into the music. And we do have some am amazing music for you tonight. So um, I'm going to bring up a photo, if I can, on, on the screen, because uh, I, want, I want our audience to be able to, uh, to visualize this. Um, so last summer, here we go. OK, can people see this photo? Panelists, nod if you can see that photo. OK, wonderful. So uh, this photo was taken in uh, Val David, Quebec. Uh, Val David is about an hour, an hour or so and change north of Montreal. And uh, I work for independent Jewish voices, but a lot of my time and energy and passion in life is devoted to migrant justice struggles. And so I'm a member of a, an organization as well called Solidarity Across Borders uh, that fights against deportations, uh, that basically fights for a regularization program for all undocumented people in Canada. Um, but a lot of that also means struggling against the migrant uh, prison system and the migrant detention system. And so last year, there was a company who was awarded a contract to build a brand new migrant prison in Montreal. Ooh. And that company was called Tisseur. And Tisseur has an office in Val David. So Val David, you know, it's a nice little touristy town, but it, it's not really a town. Uh, that gets a lot of protests. And so a whole bunch of us, this was last August, a whole bunch of us from Montreal, we got in cars and we said, okay, we're going to go do a demo outside the offices of Tisseur. And you know, if you do a demo in the city, maybe you're, you're used to doing a demo in the downtown of a city where there's going to be lots of passers by and you're going to be able to hand out flyers and talk to people about your cause and, you know, tell people why it's so important to oppose the thing that you're protesting. But we get in front of this office and it's just on the side of the highway and there's absolutely no one for miles and kilometers. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're setting up for what would be kind of like just us in a parking lot by ourselves. All of a sudden there's about 40 klezmers, 40 klezmer musicians who come down the highway in this beautiful, glorious caravan 
and they're calling themselves Yiddishists Against Prisons, and they bust out their instruments, and they start playing klezmer in front of this office where there's this company who just got a big smack in contract to build a new prison to lock up migrants. And it was honestly, it was such a beautiful, beautiful thing because it brought so much joy. And I think for me, it reminded us, you know, the power of our ancestors and the power that the Jews have brought to social movements in terms of, you know, picking up our instruments and, and showing up in solidarity, in support, whether it's against the prison industrial complex or whether it's against deportations or whether it's against police brutality. And so you can see in this photo, a lot of our performers who are here with us today, some accordion players. I think, I know Brivole was there. I don't know if y'all are in this. Dancing song. in the background. Dancing in the background, there you go. Um, so, so I think that, what, what that demo kind of set off for me was wanting to kind of dig into this a little bit deeper saying, um, oh, and I forgot to mention actually, because it wasn't just a coincidence that all of these klezmer musicians from all over North America all of a sudden just showed up in front of Tissot. It definitely was not a coincidence. Uh, what was happening was that, you know, just, just up the road, maybe a few towns over, Klez Canada was happening. And Klez Canada, I'm sure many folks here know, is an annual convergence gathering a conference of Yiddish enthusiasts and klezmer musicians. And what I found was so beautiful is that they were able to just all of a sudden round up this huge contingent to make a massive contingent of Yiddishists against prisons. And um, I got to give props to my friend Simone, who I know is like really instrumental in organizing that because, you know, the, this, this labor has to be recognized. It's organizing labor. It's never just a coincidence, right? It, you know, it wasn't a coincidence that Rosa Parks just decided that she wasn't going to move to the back of the bus. And it wasn't just a coincidence that all of these klezmer musicians showed up. It's because we believe in something much bigger. And so, you know, what we wanted to explore was why today, when we're facing increasing fascism around the world, when we're facing increasing police brutality, increasing border regimes, why are we seeing this amazing resurgence of people who are singing in Yiddish and playing this beautiful music? And so I, I'm hoping that that's the energy that uh, we're all gonna share tonight. Now, rather than a traditional concert where the bands play sets and then maybe the crowd mingles in between, it's gonna be a little bit different. This is kind of, you have to think part concert, but also part panel discussion. And so we're going to do it as a bit of a round robin. So I'm going to be calling on the different artists to, uh, to start playing and they're going to share a song and then we're going to chat just a little bit about it. Then you'll hear from another artist. And then we're definitely going to want to hear from our audience uh, at the end. We have, we have over 300 people with us this evening, which is incredible. I, I you know, definitely, uh, you know, one of one of the bigger events that we've had with IJV, and so I, I really hope that uh, that people brought uh, their curiosity and their passion, and we'd love to hear from some of you. Um, you know, later on, I'll explain this again, but there will be two ways where you can ask questions. There's a, a little Q and A box at the bottom of your screen where you can pop a question in there, or if you want, you can click the the raise hand button, and so that'll you know put up your hand as if we were in a real place. And I'll actually call on you so you can ask your question on mic. You won't be on camera, so you know, don't worry about your hair, what you're wearing or all that. And um, yeah, like I said, we'll get to the questions in just a little bit. So without further ado, uh, I think we're gonna start with Ira, if, uh, if you're ready. And uh, Ira's got the accordion and um, Ira, I'll just turn it over to you, but maybe if you want to just uh, set it up and tell us uh, what you're going to play uh, to start us off. Um, hi, everyone, and thank you so much to Aaron and all of IJV for having us and for throwing this event. Um, uh, it takes a little imagination to feel everybody in this room, but I think it's a good exercise um, because whenever we gather in public, we know that we're also connected to many people who who share our drive and, and our desire, our desires for whatever, I don't know, whatever we're doing, be it a concert or a protest. And so um, it's really awesome to see your comments and it's awesome to be here 
um, with Brivola and Jeff. Um, so I'm going to perform a song called Oi Veis Vester und Brider. It's, um, it's a song that was collected by Moshe Bergowski, one of the, one of the most amazing collectors of, of Yiddish songs in the Ukraine. And it was pro it's a folk song that has a couple variants and probably is maybe between 120 and 150 years old. And um, yeah, it, it kind of says basically like, Oy vey, excellent siblings. We love each other with a love that's true. But if the police found out that we're all here together, that we're all gathered here, all in one room, that's the setup. Now I have to change something very small about my audio setup. Okay. Um, that's exciting. While you're doing that, maybe, um, let's see, we'll do some banter. Um, you were gonna, you were gonna turn on the reverb, right? Okay. Um, give me the thumbs up when you're, and I'll stop. But one thing I'd love to see is if, if people, okay, thumbs up. Uh, it, you know, we can't, we can't hear applause, but like, if you want to put like exclamation points or emojis in the chat, we'll take that as applause. Take it away, Ira. Oi veis fester un brider, mir hopen sich alle mess lieb, mir hopen sich alle mess lieb, und als Polizia sie wird sich der Wiesen, als mir Sabirayen sich alle in den Stieb. Und als Polizia sie wird sich der Wiesen, als mir Sabirayen sich alle in den Stieb. Just in that one room we're gathered. Oh, we gathered together in that one room. With all of us together, the room was full. We're all here together and the room was full. And whomsoever tipped off the police, they should rot together in the Kiev hospital. It's a very common curse in songs from this time. And whomsoever tipped off the police, they should rot in the Kiev hospital. I love this song because it's like 36 hours in the life of a protest. It was early in the morning when the precinct head, he came into the hall. The precinct head, he came into the hall. So we had a little fight and then all the cops came running, all the cops and guards to arrest us all. Yeah, we just had a little fight, and then all the cops came running. All the cops and guards to arrest us all. In the next verse, they arrest everyone. And by the time they do that, it's about 2 o'clock at night, uh, they, when they bring everybody in together and, and lock them in jail. Arrestiert hat men uns alle. Das ist gewähnt, warum zwei Säger bei Nacht. Das ist gewähnt, warum zwei Säger bei Nacht. So hat man uns alle zu naiv genommen. Und man hat uns euch in ein Strog verspart. So hat man uns alle zu naiv genommen. Und man hat uns euch in ein Strog verspart. So then in the morning, they send everybody on to Vasilkov. It takes them about two o'clock to the afternoon to get there. And here's where the song starts to give you its perspective. All the mothers and fathers came running, and they they were all weeping and wailing. Ah, am Morgen hat man uns gedacht, kein Vassal kaufen, oi schicken. Das ist gewähnt, er rums bei a Säger bei Tog. Das ist gewähnt, es war so, das ist gewähnt, er rums bei a Säger bei Tog. Als soi es angeläuf in die Futters mit die Mitters. Und es ist geworden ein Jammer mit der Klog. So ist angeläufen, die Futters mit die Mitter. Und es ist geworden ein Jammer mit der Klog. But you know what? Stop your weeping and wailing. This is directed towards the mothers and fathers, I think. You don't have to stoop and sink low, because actually people will have envy for you and your children, because they suffer actually for all people. Nebuch. Oi, oi, herzuhin auf zu weinen und zu klugen. 
Falt para dizer a vazou e filmetaró. Falt para dizer a vazou e filmetaró. Af aira kinder vet men aicha mo me kana zain. Falt se stradai in ne bechvaren ganzen naro. Af aira kinder vet men aicha mo me kana zain. Falt se stradai in ne bechvaren ganzen naro. Oi vei schwester und Brüder, mir haben sich alle Messli, mir haben sich alle Messli. Und als Polizia sie wird sich der Wissen, als mir sabireien sich alle in ein Stieb. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, so that was, okay, we couldn't quite see what you were playing. It was a little bit out of the camera. Was that, what, what was that instrument there? This is a little synthesizer. Ooh, very nice. And now that song, um, can you tell us the title of it again? Well, so it's just from, it's like just from a collection of many, many folk songs collected by Moisha Bergovsky. And so most of the songs just have the title of the name of the first line, which in this case is Oi Ve Schwester und Brüder, which I translated to um, Oi Ve Excellent Siblings, Amazing. which is a mistranslation, which is fine. Okay. Is there anything else you could tell us like about the history of that song or like how you came across it? Well, this amazing book has a lot of sections of songs for weddings, for popular culture, for celebration, and also a lot of songs that are songs of struggle. There's a whole section of songs that are like, basically like rich people live in the top floors and poor people live in the bottom floors and get lung diseases. There's like, there's like that's a whole genre of folk song actually. And sim like this, there's another, <laughs> there's another, anyway, so, so, this is this is folk music. It's it's really you know, not to sound old, but it's essentially a meme. It's like it was you know people are uh, it's it's something that people sang to communicate what was going on, and so necessarily there's kind of several versions um, of it. In another version of the song, the room that these folks are sitting in, um, that they're gathered in, is the is a synagogue, um, and uh, and then at the end th there's a complaint that when when everybody got to the station, um, it says they made a chain of checkers, which is a reference I don't understand. And then they didn't let the mother see their children to give them a piece of bread. But I love the version, right? With folk music, we get to like, it's like a, everybody knows that all these kids are being arrested, right? And it's not clear whether it's because of labor strikes or, and there's some annotation in the back of the book about what these songs might've been about, but this one is mysteriously absent. So, you know, I'm positive that there's somebody on this call who knows better than me, but, um, but, uh, but um, I'm really partial to the version that is, is like reassuring parents that this is a popular struggle that has meaning and value, not just for the moment, but for the future. Uh, in New York over the past few months, we've just seen a, a level of protest that we, we haven't seen in a really long time, incredible popular protest and the police responding with such such violent force that pushed a lot of people to see what the police were capable of and how little civilian control there is over the police. And I think that um, I think that um, going back and learning these songs, which speak to altercations with the police and a, an effort to understand them in the popular imagination, felt really relevant. Felt, felt really relevant to me. Um, and I, I just especially like about this song that it. It's just, it's like very, it's, it's not very poetic. It's just like, it's like, I don't know. I've had this conversation a bunch of times. It's like, when did that person get out of central booking? Uh, it took, like they got in at two, it took them until, you know, it's, it's poetic in that it's like, it's two and two. It's like they, they, they came in the morning and then they booked them at two in the afternoon. And then it, they got to the prison at two at night. And then at two the next day, they got sent to Vasukov. It's, it's just like, it's, it's processing. It's, it's the folk process. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Ira. And we'll hear a little bit more from Ira in just a little bit. Uh, we're going to uh, go now to uh, the West Coast to, again, our friends in Seattle, Brivale. And so uh, one thing, maybe we should, we should give a shout out to, to one of your members who wasn't able to be with us this evening, uh, Hannah, who isn't here. So maybe Hannah's tuning in. So shout out, Hannah, 
from Bourvillet. Uh, <laughs> how's it going? Uh, anyways, um, we were trying to kind of like figure out the technology of doing, you know, not only like a, a Zoom concert, but one where people could do it safely, right, with a band. And I don't know, you know, Stephanie and Maya, maybe if, if y'all want to jump in, um, but what, what we're going to actually see from, from Brivillet is some exclusive brand new videos that, that you all shot. Um, because I guess, I guess it, it's hard. It must be hard as a band to even get together and rehearse during these weird pandemic times. Yeah, true. <laughs> so, so true. Um, these are shot in my backyard. Um, so, so what we've done is to be very far away from each other outside um, and then to, to try and go from there. And we are incredibly indebted to a dear, dear friend, Brian Lindsay, um, as well as to Hannah and Eve um, for figuring out what sort of an eating schedule was gonna work for our recording schedule. Um, yeah, we're grateful to have, have the, the kick in the, the tuchus to figure that out, Aaron. So thanks for the inspiration. Indeed. So, um, well, we're going to hear a, a brand new tune, I believe is, you know, unrecorded up until this point. It hasn't been on any of your albums. Uh, it's called Hunting Season. Uh, do you want to, should we play it first and then do you want to tell the story after or do you want to set it up a little I bit? I think we'll, we'll tell you, we'll tell you a story really quickly. Um, but I want to, um, I want to just name for those of us who have, um, lost dear people and family during this pandemic and also during this uprising. Um, a lot of us in Seattle have lost people for both of those reasons um, and for the overlaps that exist. Um, so I just want to take a minute to, to name that. Um, and with that being named, um, we're starting this with this song because we wanted to imagine with all of you winning because we know um, sort of intimately what the struggle feels like and has felt like for a really long time. But like, we don't often give ourselves the space to think about like, what if we won though? What would that be like? Um, so this tune was one, was us playing with that idea and us playing with a particularly Yiddish utopianist tradition of a sort. Um, and the tune, is actually three songs stitched together, um, thinking about, um, you know, what the world to come might uh, look like and how we might build a little of it now. Um, and the first, the Yiddish that you're gonna hear at the end of the song um, will be familiar to some of you. Um, it's pilfered um, first from Wacht um, Oif, Awake or Wake Up and so sein, what if, um, and it's translated really roughly as like, how long, how much longer are you going to stay slaves, um, making the riches for the ones who steal your bread? Um, and then maybe I'm building castles in the sky, but in my dream, things are brighter and better and the sky is bluer than blue. Um, and the other, um, folks that we're indebted to is a, is a crew in New Mexico called Hawk and a Hacksaw that you can check out if you like, um, that gave us sort of the melody and the shape of the tune. And we're also a bit indebted to Jeff for hearing an early draft of this song um, and saying, yeah, but you could, you could push, push the lyrics a little further. And then we said, yeah, yeah, we could do that. Um, so, so this is hunting season. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna see this brand new. Just give me one second. All right. Can Maya, can you see that on your screen? Yeah, okay. but you might need to get it back to the beginning again. Ah, true. Thank you. Technology. All right, here we go. Cities. 
place we have found All the banks are closed down The squatters all keep their homes And the landlords do something else with their lives And in the suburbs and the towns The flies have burned the prisons to the ground That was Rivale right there with Hunting Season. Get a little bit of applause going in the chat, you know, put in your exclamation points and your ampersands, I don't know, whatever makes applause. I mean, it, I got to admit, it's, it's strange being, because I, I love seeing live music. I love being at shows. And, you know, here we all are in our living rooms or whatnot. Um, but that was beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. So if I'm not mistaken, I mean, that that hasn't been on an album of yours yet, but is it on a forthcoming album or anything like that? Yeah, we started recording an album last, what, fall, winter? And then everything went to shit. Um, so <laughs> we're, we're in the middle of trying to figure out how we can finish um, producing our album. Uh, yeah. Amazing. That's exciting. There, there's a line that I really love from that, that, you know, there'll be no borders to cross, the people will all move freely, the walls have disappeared. And I mean, Maya, I think you, you invoked this you know, earlier on when you were talking about it, but Seattle, of course, 
you know, a lot of eyes were on Seattle during the, the uprising, the Black Lives Matter uprising following the killing uh, of George Floyd last May. And, um, and I think there were some tragic things that happened in Seattle, but it also seemed like there was something really beautiful built there where there was a whole autonomous zone. Um, I think it was called the Chaz, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. The name might have changed too, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm well, wondering- I'm surprised to know that, that there were many names and many opinions. As there often are. Um, so I'm wondering if, if you two can maybe just reflect on you know, like the meaning of that song, but also like how it might have felt in the backdrop to what you've both been through in your city over the last few months. <laughs> Shall I start, Steph, and then I'll, I'll hand you to the baton. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think that, um, that thinking about this song in a particular kind of long conversation, um, as well as sort of like heated and furious and not always graceful debate about, um, you know, what, what we're trying to build and what we're trying to tear down um, was, was important to us. Um, and I think that as we've been, all of us navigating what it means to show up in this moment, um, and what it means to, to hear the story of what people believe is going on in the up uprising, what people believe is going on in Seattle, when we know that this started so much longer ago um, than where people um, are willing to start the story. Um, I think we were thinking about all of those things. Um, we were thinking about the people in our lives who aren't able to be on the streets um, and what we can be doing with them um, and how they're still part of this conversation. Um, so those are just sort of some things to tease out of this moment. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, do you want to add anything? Uh, um, just, yes, how, how, to, how to be um, in this world right now, how to be supporting the people in the streets um, when not on the streets myself or when I am on the streets, how to be in the streets in a safe and effective way. Um, there's, uh, I don't know, just so many um, ways that things in Seattle, people come to Seattle and they're like, oh, it's such a great place. But there's actually like a lot of things that have been like fundamentally wrong um, politically in the city for a very long time and people have been fighting for reforms for a very long time and like um, abolished, abolishing um, the youth detention center has been like a, a conversation, an argument for years and years and years and just last month the uh, county executive was like, hey, I think we should just abolish that youth de detention center. Um, and we're like, great, that's great. Um, we've been saying that for a long time. Thanks for finally like listening. Um, it shouldn't have to take people being murdered and riots in the streets for that to happen. Mm -hmm. I think we also like in the spirit of saying her name, um, I, I think we want to say Charlena Lyle's name. Um, those of us here remember her um, and remember how she was murdered by the police. Thank you. Um, wonderful. Well, also, you know, speaking of Seattle and in much less political importance, uh, though I will note Seattle has a new NHL hockey team with an awful name, the Kraken. I don't know where they came up with that, but as a devout hockey fan, I've already decided I do not like the Seattle Kraken. So we, we can't help you with that. We we've got no answers for you, Aaron. <laughs> okay. That's all right. We're not here to talk about hockey as much as I would love that. Um, well, let's move a little bit north from where you all are, and we'll uh, north. We'll go, we'll go to Jeff. We'll go to Jeff Burner, our very own Jeff Burner. Well, I shouldn't say our very own because we're not, we're not about nationalities here. Um, Jeff joining us from the Coast Salish territories in 
Vancouver. And uh, Jeff, what do you got for us to, to kick us off? Uh, well, uh, Aaron, you were asking for two or three songs, so I think I should, you know, I don't get that many chances to play, so I should probably like play ones that you asked me for first. Uh, this uh, is my kind of uh, weird version of a old combination of songs, Daloy uh, Police and uh, I think In Alagasin. Thank you, Jeff. There it is. And uh, it's um, just, some, I believe that I found out about it when I was driving Bob Cohen around uh, Romania, because uh, Bob Cohen is the klezmer guy, and uh, I drove him around rural Romania for about a month there, and uh, he had a lot to say, and uh, and that that one was like he was like you know that there's a song to Lloyd Floyd say it basically means fuck the police you know and you could it's sort of like the sort of thing you would do I would think and so and then I think Dan Khan I was floating the idea to him and he was he said oh well it was common for us to sing uh, out of your houses into the streets everybody say fuck the police uh, and I was like just I kind of just grabbed those things and then I wrote some verses about things that I was thinking about in, in English and uh, and and it's been I've played it a lot uh, and uh, I'm pretty I got to be part of this weird river of song by diving into this song so so it's nice it's a nice thing tradition and all they like they say so i guess i'll play it for you now take it away by standing up Let's see all right <laughs> I've played a lot of places, I'll play them all again. Everywhere I go, I hear the same old thing again. Somebody dies in police custody. Soon there are questions from the family. But first the situation makes those lawmen look so filthy. And they investigate themselves and it turns out that they're not guilty. Hey, hey, the Lord police means the same thing now as yesterday. Out of your houses into the streets, everybody say, fuck the police. Ian Bush's parents didn't know he was a killer. When Constable Kessler picked him up for having an open can of Miller. This was in uh, sort of northern BC there, in Canada. In case you think stuff like this doesn't go on in Canada, if you're watching from America, you're mistaken. Ian Bush's parents didn't know he was a killer when Constable Kessler picked him up for having an open can of Miller. The video at the station house somehow got erased, but the bull was there so we can know exactly what took place. He said the boy jumped on his back, but the cop was quick instead, said he reached around and shot him right in the back of the head. Constable Kessler would not demonstrate just how this thing is done. If you think that it's impossible, then the coroner's not alone. Well, hey, hey, the Lord police say means the same thing now as yesterday. Out of your houses, into the streets, 
everybody say fuck the police There must be something magic down in those holding cells Cause the stuff that happens there, it just don't happen nowhere else Healthy people dying from a sudden heart attack Men who hang themselves with their hands tied behind their back There's lots of good and brave police, it must be true I guess It's brave to work with a murderer sipping coffee by your desk hey, hey. The Lord police say means the same thing now as yesterday. Out of your houses, into the streets, everybody say, fuck the police. Woo! Oh, I, I mean, so the, the chat thing is lit up with uh, ACAB and FTP. ACAB, which I'm assuming means accordions are beautiful. Um, <laughs> and, uh, well, I mean, it, it, I think it warms my heart to hear that song. I know it's, it warms a lot of people's hearts here. Um, the first time I ever heard you play that was in the fall of 2010 at the beloved Casa del Popolo here in Montreal. And it was particularly cathartic for me because as again, a lot of Canadians here will remember that summer in June of 2010 was the G20 summit in Toronto and it was the largest mass arrest in Canadian history. So the police just kind of went ape shit, arresting like everyone who, you know, looked like a protester. They thought they looked like a protester, people who just kind of got cut up in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, but it was, it was massive and they spent over a billion dollars on this security state and uh, it was it was a very difficult summer just seeing a lot of the repression that so many friends faced. I just narrowly escaped arrest when I was there. Uh, had some good friends and comrades who you know went to jail for a year because they were organizing against uh, the G20 summit. And so it was particularly cathartic to be in a concert hall, to be in a room with you playing that song and just to be there yelling out at the top of my lungs of everyone else, fuck the police. So I hope people were doing that here. And I wanted to ask you, I mean, there's a line in that song that I actually have kind of come back to more recently and I, f I find myself referencing and it's the line where you say, there must be some good and brave police, I guess. It's brave to work with a murderer sipping coffee by your desk. And I think that kind of speaks to like the whole argument of like the bad apple, right? Like, because people will say, oh yeah, well, there's some good police. And I think, well, I mean, if there are good police out there, like why aren't they denouncing the whole system, right? Um, so that, that's kind of what it makes me think of. But what I wanted to ask you is like, you know, you referenced some really specific things in there, like Ian Bush, of course. Um, if you were to take that song again today and write another verse to it, do you, do you know what you would write on or what, what would it sound like if you, if you kind of reworked that song in the summer of 2020? Oh, um, I, I don't know. Um, I, I play that verse and uh, um, I feel that it's worthwhile to, to, to continue uh, partly because that story of Ian Bush and his murder by Constable Kessler was so absurd in, in this, this story that, that Kessler brought Bush into the, the station and then suddenly the, the video goes off and then, and then Ian Bush has never gotten a speeding ticket like in, is just like lying dead on the floor with a bullet in the back of his head and and Kessler is like oh <laughs> like it's so absurd and also it's um and and uh it remains for me au courant you know because uh Ian Bush is still dead his parents still don't have him anymore and his family still has that hold yeah. And so I don't see it as like 
ever being dated for that reason. Um, but definitely, it's a for me, it's a trying to be part of some kind of tradition. So I would really encourage just anybody who felt like taking that song and running with it to like put their favorite second verse, uh, you know, their their the story that really got them, uh, you know, and uh, I think that's what this how it's supposed to work, you know. It's okay. not for me to say how that song should be written by the next generation, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And indeed, I, I mean, I know Brivole have a, a version of that song too, which is uh, up on their band camp. By the way, a lot of people were asking in the chat um, that, you know, uh, I think Ira, before you, you mentioned a book of songs, maybe if you're able to just like put that in the chat, the name of that book, um, or, you know, Brivole folks, if you want to put, um, like a link to your band camp in there. We'll, we'll go through everyone's links at the end too, but just because people, people are asking. Um, what, uh, again, what's interesting about that song in Alan Gasson, Daloi Police or Fuck the Police, is uh, there's this YouTube clip that's probably made the rounds. So I think it was part of this, this older documentary, The Jewish Anarchists, uh, where you can see people like, you know, Jewish anarchists in Russia singing that song, um, which is fascinating to me because it's just kind of this little snippet, yet I feel like that that song looms much larger in our collective imagination. And Jeff, you mentioned you kind of came up with the idea for the song driving around in, in Romania, but do we know much more about like the origins of that song or the history? Um, I, didn't, I didn't come up with the idea for the song. Like I just... I just had people tell me I really ought to do a version of this thing, you know. So uh, my my not understanding of it is uh, I I know Sybil has done like a, a more like uh, like authentic version of it, and uh, and I know that the Brivola does a version of it that like is is like makes sense to me, you know. So. Uh, but I think that they sang it in um, first in in the attempted revolution of '05 when the the czar uh, little czar, Nikki is that right? <laughs> yeah, little Nikki. Yeah, well they they they, they mowed down you know people with machine guns you know and stuff and uh, apparently that was something people didn't like very much. Uh, and uh, so that kind of, that's what I understand. But maybe if any, I would open up the thing to, to the other scholars in the group here. I think that the chat is gonna, it's gonna bring some scholarship to us. Um, <laughs> but I, I will add that Brivala loves um, this song also because it's been a mashup for so long. Like it's actually two songs, um, Daloi Police and Inalagasen, but that people have, have sung them together for a really long time. Um, which since, you know, we, we love surreptitiously stitching lots of different songs together is something that like is incredibly appealing about the history of the tune. Amazing. Well, let, let's get on to some more live music after all that's what we're here for. Uh, let, let's circle back to uh, Ira, Ira Temple, who is again with us from Brooklyn. And um, do, you need, do you need a second to set up? No, you're good. So, uh, what are we going to hear from you next? Uh, I'm going to sing a song. Well, I'm going to sing a song called Nesia Slender Arbe Gegangen. Nesia left work. And it has a lot of versions, actually. Chava left work. Chavala left work. Hanala left work. So, so it's another song about uh, a person killed by police, about a woman killed by police. And again, in the folk process, like that was taken to, to, that was taken to talk about a lot of people um, and has been performed by a lot of people also. Um, I also just want to say that um, there was some questions about this Beragovsky book and I answered it in the Q&A question. So if you go into the Q&A, you can find it in the answered questions tab. Um, I, uh, I, uh, I wrote the name of the book and then also there's a couple, there's some great Beragovsky action happening online right now. There's two amazing Facebook groups dedicated to discussion of this stuff. So I linked to them 
for enthusiasts. And then I also recommend the Ruth Rubin Archive at Evo. Um, for those of us, for those of us who are obsessed with archives as a source of radical material, which I think is a high, high, large demographic at this show. Mm -hmm. So much for uh, putting that in the PMA. <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay. <laughs> Oh, this is the thing that I wanted to do. Just von ihrer Arbeit gegangen. Sie hat noch von ihr Unglück nicht gewusst. Roy ist gegangen, der Mörder der Priester, und hat sie geschossen um sie. Nessia left from work. She didn't know what was going to become about her, but uh, what was going to become of her. Then out came her murder. The the police officer and and shot her for no reason. Die Gassen fast mal ziehen, Bolnitze getragen. Gewesen seinen See full mit Blut. Als man hat sie Bolnitze reingetragen, hat sie noch gelebt zehn Minuten. Als man hat sie an Bolnitze reingetragen. Hat sie noch gelebt, zehn Minuten. The streets that they brought her to the hospital through were filled with her blood. And when they brought her finally into the hospital, she lived only ten minutes. Brüder, mir toren mit Schweigen, fahr unsere Chavertes Blut. Mir darfen das Blut unseres waschen, mit Bombes in jeder Minute. Mir darfen das Blut unseres waschen, mit Bombes in jeder Minute. We have to respond to the death of our comrade with bombs. And we have to fill the street with them. There's another version of this song with a really beautiful last verse. It says, if you're hit by a bullet, my dear one, by the enemy, the dog, then I will carry you on my arms away from the fire and heal with my kisses, your wounds. As treftich a coil mein getraie, find dem soine dem hint, dann trug ich dich auf meine hand von dem feie, und ich heil dir mit kisch deine wind. Dann trug ich dich auf meine hand von dem feie, Und ich heil dir mit Kisch deine Wind. Yay, thank you. Amazing. Um,
So, you know, a, a bittersweet tune um, evokes a lot of different things. And people are saying in the chat, that was like a really gorgeous version. Um, what's really interesting, I mean, you mentioned there's been a lot of versions of this. I saw a band in New York City play this, Koi, oh, I'm not going to get their name, Koi for... Koi for Dein Verdacht. Yes, say it one more time. Um, it's, it's like the suspicion of my filth or something. Yeah, that's Koi for Dein Verdacht. Rosa's here tonight. Oh, hi, Rosa. Um, and yeah, I, I saw them play a version of that song. It was at a, a rock camp for girls show in the basement of this school in like midtown Manhattan. And, and it was really, it was amazing to see like these like 12 year old girls engaging with this material that it was really, really heavy. And I think, you know, the version they did is um, Maya left for work about uh, a black trans woman who was murdered by police outside of Baltimore in, uh, in 2015. Um, you know, a, a lot of like, there's a lot of lines in that song that I wrote down because I love, but one of them in particular that stands out for me is, if a bullet should find you, my faithful one, from our enemy, the dog, then with my own hands, I'll carry you from the fire and heal your wounds uh, with kisses. And, and for me, that kind of reflects a lot of, on like the trauma that is involved in not only police brutality, but like, you know, these movements against police brutality that like we're all feeling um, or that I shouldn't say we're all because that kind of flattens it. Of course, there's communities that are much more impacted by police violence. Uh, but I'm wondering what those lines kind of evoke for you and when you're singing them. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure I have so much to add to that. I think, unfortunately, there's many types of violence against women that are kind of evergreen to discuss in song. And mm -hmm. Um, police violence against women is no um, exception. I really appreciate Coit's version explicitly about trans women. And, you know, we're trying to, there's, there's some attempt in New York right now to get like a walking while trans bill um, off the, or legislation off the, I mean, uh, law off the, off the dockets and, um, oh, and Rosa just, um, yeah, shared a link, a link the to, to the Coit version. Um, and, you know, I just, like, I think obviously about Breonna Taylor, whose murderers are still employed. Um, and I, I just, I think that we, um, you know, this is actually, um, the sources say that this is this is like a reinterpretation of a of a Bundist um, of a Bundist melody talking about the importance of being in the struggle. And when you when you listen to those tunes, and it's a Gottesman has written about that. It's like a it's like really a militant march, and it's a beautiful march about solidarity. And I think that's very beautiful. And I think that this tune, which really taps into a kind of Yiddish unaccompanied singing tradition, which has been really carried forward by women in the Yiddish tradition. Um, contains a lot of ability to hold grief. And we need that so much right now. Um, I think it's really revolutionary to give ourselves space for it. We're experiencing, we're experiencing a time where death is, we're being told that death needs to be commonplace. And we're experiencing, um, and we've, you know, we've been experiencing a time where we, the, a lot of people have accepted the violence of the police as part of, as part of the, um, part of the, um, the cost of living, and have even like um, encouraged it or um, invited it. And um, yeah, I think you're right that there's a lot of grief. I think there's there's a lot of grief to process, and um, I, I wonder if there's like our like a challenges with dealing with grief can also become a barrier for people to um, to want to participate in political action because um, there's a high cost for accepting that you can look at the world. I don't know. I don't, know, I don't mean to sound glib, but it's it's a it's a high emotional cost, and 
and um, like I know that in my own practice when I'm like I I, so I like often do a lot of crying while I'm like really internalizing really serious repertoire and and um, and it it it's it's a lot anyway I don't I don't want I don't mean to say that to take away from the grief of people who have lost family um, uh, and I think that anyway I, I'm really moved that this song exists to memorialize Nessia and Hanala and Chavala and also that we're you know we're singing happy birthday to Brianna Taylor in the streets and that we're that but honestly like the just like to be real like the the toll of the number of people that we are memorializing is very very high indeed and i really appreciate that you know people in the audience are saying in the chat that grief is radical and important and i think we have to remember that and, and hold that with us so thank you so much ira um we're gonna move back to brivale and hear another brand new tune of theirs so um I'm getting this one queued up. Uh, this one is going to be "Don't Despair About the Supreme Court." And again, do do y'all want to uh, set this one up a little bit before we hear it? Yeah. Um, so we learned the melody for this song two years ago at Clez Canada, and um, we learned it from a folklorist and singer Ethel Rame. And, um, she's been doing incredible work preserving uh, and, and bringing to light like beautiful songs, um, beautiful Yiddish songs from way back when. And um, so when we learned this song from her, the original lyrics were in Yiddish and the title was Oif di Vegelach, um, On the Road. And it was about this, this like, it was this kind of like love song and I thought it was terrible. Um, I, I thought that like the story that they were telling in this song was just actually pretty terrible. Um, and it was kind of like a stalker song. Like there were lots of different interpretations, but. Um, but it was a great melody and it's from the Zingerai tradition where um, like you're sitting around the table all together and you're singing together and, um, and so, um, we, we retained that zingerai. Um, so what we're going to do in, when you hear the song is feel free to sing. Uh, it's like a call and response. So feel free to sing along, um, on your own, own home computers. Um, and, uh, we, um, so, okay. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't care much for the original lyrics and I, was reading an essay um, later that fall, um, fall of 2018, during the um, Brett Kavanaugh hearings. Um, the US Supreme Court um, was in the process of appointing a new justice who um, is, has just a terrible, um, uh, I don't even know how to, like eloquently say like how despicable I think this person's um, policy uh, or like judgments are and anything. Anyways, I was reading an essay um, during the Brett Kavanaugh hearings um, and the essay was written in what, 2005? I don't actually remember when it was originally written. I think so. I think 2000, so. It was written in 2005 by Howard Zinn. And the essay um, is where I got the new lyrics for this song. And the hit Howard Zinn's essay is called Don't Despair About the Supreme Court. So all of the lyrics that are in this song, I basically lifted from his essay or um, used liberties with. Um, so that's the origin of this new version of this song. So sing along on mute. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna cue it up. Grivale with Don't Despair at the Supreme Court. On this day, we the people 
On this day, we the people, in order to form a more perfect union. On this day, we the people, on this day, we the people, we shall not be governed by tyrants. We shall not be governed by tyrants. In order to uphold justice, we will engage in civil disobedience. We will engage in civil disobedience. It would be naive to depend on the courts or depend on the Constitution. Workers, queers, women, people of color, our rights come only when we organize. Our rights come only when we organize. No Supreme Court will stop the wars or establish free health care for all or redistribute the wealth of this country or end mass incarceration. Let's end mass incarceration. The law is not the same as justice. The law is not the same as justice. Equal justice before the law has always been a sham, has always been a sham. Don't despair about the Supreme Court. Don't despair about the president. These are not our only choices. Political leadership be damned. Political leadership be damned. We the people have the power. We the people have the power. To bring democracy by organizing. We all have to shake the system up. We all have to shake the system up. In order to uphold justice. In order to uphold justice. We the people will protest, demonstrate, strike, boycott, rebel, rebel, violate the law, and cause such a commotion. In order to uphold justice. In order to uphold justice. On this day, we the people. On this day, we the people. In order to uphold justice. On this day, we the people. On this day, we the people. All right, that was Vivale right there with, oh. <laughs> I was worried I was cutting the video off. Don't despair at the Supreme Court. And I, I was gonna like ask you guys a question kind of like along the lines, like reflecting on the November election. And I'm like, that's actually kind of depressing. I don't think anyone here really wants a breakdown of that. Um, so, but what I, what I did want to ask is something much more musical and joyous, I think. Um, I've had the pleasure of, of seeing Brivole play live, I think a few times now. Uh, once was in Montreal just after Clez Canada and um, you guys did a beautiful backyard show, which was really nice. Uh, and then another time in Baltimore. And, and what I love is that I think you often start off your live shows with an acapella tune. And, and we, you know, um, I was interviewing you guys for, for my podcast. I do a podcast called The Rebel Beat where we were talking a little bit about like what that does when you kind of come together just with your voices, no instruments and sing a cappella. And can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> um, I mean, we love that also. I think um, for like a really just like foundational reason of we love to sing together um and that every time we get to do that um feels a little bit like a shahihianu moment like it's not guaranteed that we all like get to make it um to this season where we get to be together and i think that that's um all the more present in this moment now and so whenever we get to sing together um now that singing is something that's um you know, What's that? Incredibly oh, thank goodness. Um, that's amazing. 
Sorry, uh, one moment. Larry, you got to mute your mic. <laughs> but whatever was good news, Larry, we're glad that it was good news. Um, but so whenever we get to sing together, especially now when singing is sort of dangerous in this, um, you know, incredibly present and um, grief stricken way, but it reminds us that singing is dangerous in all of these other much more um, generative fecund ways, right? Like that when we get to sing together, um, it's something that, that like actually shifts some tectonic plates sometimes, right? And like makes some things feel possible that weren't possible before. Um, so I think maybe that's one, that's one reason why like, you know, we love each other and we love singing together, but that's also rooted to something much larger, which is like what happens and what's possible when we find a way of singing with one another. I'd like to add that um, it's fun to start our shows a cappella because sometimes the lineup of other bands that we play with are just like a nice hodgepodge of punk bands. And so when we just like start singing a cappella, everyone's kind of like, what's happening? Um, <laughs> So How punk can you possibly be with three-part yeah. harmony? And you're like, yeah. we can do it, friends. Totally. <laughs> Amazing. Um, also, that was, that was just funny because, uh, so th that was our wonderful uh, Larry Haven, who's a member of IJV, who just jumped on for a brief second. We were joking before we got on this call that like sometimes, you know, like if we're, we're with our Jewish family having conversations on Zoom, it's like a whole bunch of people just like, shouting at a screen and and yelling and you know ijv is this big beautiful family where we um you know are are using zoom a lot to meet and then sometimes just popping into um, to concerts as well too so it, it happens from time to time and you know it, it's all part of the fun and the surprise um let's hear more music let's let's go again to uh to jeff and uh, and and what i'll just mention is as jeff is grabbing uh, his accordion. Someone was asking me, um, I'm wearing this Daloy Polizze shirt. And then someone was like, where did you get that? And um, uh, I got it from the Ottawa branch of the Industrial Workers of the World, the Wobblies. I don't know if they do mail order or anything like that. I was lucky enough to just get it in person um, at their table at an anarchist book fair. But it's a, it's a favorite of mine. So, um, Jeff, what do you have for us next? Well, I remember that you asked me to play this song too. So I'm gonna, it's kind of similar process to how the other one I did came about. Um, I found out about this song called Bulbous and it's about the, you know, uh, like, gross ubiquity of potatoes when you're, I think it was, it's Jews serving in the army uh, when they had to be in the army for 25 years in the Russian army kind of thing. And uh, so I just, in, in Vancouver, my city, you know, is kind of run as a, like a giant real estate casino. That's what we, we, we don't, even in Seattle, there's like stuff that gets done and, you know, Amazon or, or they make coffee or I don't know. But in Vancouver, like it's pretty much real estate. It's like people buy land, trade it around and try to lure other people in so they can make some money off of them kind of thing. It seems like a lot of the time. And so, uh, you know, I was thinking about uh, Breonna Taylor and, and how she was shot by the police there in, uh, is it Louisville? Is that how you say it? And, and that I found out. Louisville. Louisville? Louisville. 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 Anyway, that, that their, her death was related to an, uh, uh, efforts by the city to gentrify her neighborhood to make it safe for condominium development, you know? So this gentrification thing seems, and singing against it is like also singing against police violence, you know, like is what I wanted to say about that. The 
My city has been in a housing crisis for 20 odd years or more. People who aren't rich can't afford to live here. And there's a $10,000 fine for being poor. They said if we let them build all those condo towers, they said the market would pull down the rent. And now we've got the most expensive city on the whole damn continent. You know, like, that's if you, like, add, you put, like, average income and then the cost of housing and stuff like that. That's why it's the most expensive. I know that San Francisco is expensive but anyway. anyway uh, our mayor says he wants something called eco-density. And of course, it's a sin not to be green. But when Mayor Ian Gillespie says, Eco-density, what does he really mean? He means Sunday, condos. Monday, condos. Tuesday and Wednesday, condos. Thursday, Friday, a few more condos. And then Saturday, for a change, Condos. What happened to a thousand culture buildings and counting? Well, they knocked them down to build more condos. And the social housing on Little Mountain. Remember that? We got rid of it. Because we needed more condos. The rich. Richards, the capital, those are special kinds of condos, the kind of condos that you call after the thing that you knock down to make the Sunday, condos, Monday, condos, Tuesday, Wednesday, condos, Thursday, Friday, more condos Saturday for a change uh, town home condominiums oh what is the plan for the Georgia viaduct they're gonna knock it down and build more condos and that's interesting because the Georgia viaduct got built on top of Hogan's Alley which was Vancouver's black neighborhood, and they cleared everybody out to make the Georgia Viaduct. And now, when Black Lives Matter demonstrates in Vancouver, they do it on top of the Georgia Viaduct, which still is their neighborhood. And they're saying, oh, you're knocking it down? I suppose you're getting ready to build us a new neighborhood we're allowed to live in again. But apparently, no, that's not what they're planning. Uh, yes. They're gonna knock it down. Why is, yeah. They're gonna knock it down and build more condos. Why is the city $400 million on the hook? They're fucked. They paid some guys to build Olympic condos. And what about the sacred burial ground? Not as sacred as condos. So the Musqueam Nation actually put up a fight. And that's the only way to stop the condos. So what's gonna happen now, for God's sake? Are we just gonna let them build more condos? Or could there be a time when we finally put the brakes? On Vancouver's mad sickness for Sunday, Cardos, Monday, Cardos, Tuesday, Wednesday, Cardos, Thursday, Friday. You know, I was just thinking about that. I say mad sickness for, like, that's a little weird. I should cut that out and figure out a different way to say that. Jeez, sorry about that, folks.
I haven't played that in a while. Anyway, could there be a time when we finally put a break, the brakes on Vancouver's, I don't know, what is it? Vancouver's desperate, just murderous, nasty. Homicidal condos? Homicidal need to build condos. The Sunday condos. Monday condos. Tuesday, Wednesday condos. Thursday, Friday, a few more condos than Saturday for a change. Market artist live work studios. Oh, love that one. Love that one. I mean, I don't love gentrification. I don't think any of us love gentrification, but uh, condos are bulbous. Um, so what I, what I want to do is um, I want to kind of get some audience participation going because uh, we're going to hear more music. What we'll do, like I'm kind of picturing, I want to picture us as being in a concert hall together, but we're not, obviously. Like I said, we're all just, Jeff has a very yellow background. I'm sitting in my dining room. We're all at home. Um, but we're, we'll do kind of like an encore, you know, like the classic rock thing of like the band goes back to like the dressing room and the crowd is like, woo! And then you do that whole like performance where you have to like chant their name and clap, even though you know they'll still come out and do an encore. Um, and you like see how long you can make them wait maybe. Um, so it'll be kind of like that. No, my, you're like, no, you, we just- No, like, that's just mean. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I've been to some shows where people, like the band will like really seriously make you wait a while. And then no, that, it, someone needed to pee. <laughs> yeah, I think they're just tired. <laughs> all, all good excuses, yeah. Um, but, but I do want to take uh, some questions from uh, our wonderful audience. So again, two ways to uh, ask questions if, if you're, feeling a little bit shy, you can just type a question in the Q&A box. Or if you want to ask a question live on the mic, you won't be, you won't be on camera, like I was saying. Um, so you don't have to worry about, you know, if you're looking not your, if you're looking a little shabby, that's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, you can click the raise your hand button and then, and then we'll call on you. So um, there was a really good question in here from, from Joyce. Uh, and Joyce wanted to address this to, to any of you folks. And uh, we haven't really talked that much about Yiddish so far. We've heard some songs with a little bit of Yiddish already. But Joyce asks, um, what is it about the Yiddish language that makes you use it to express your current concerns? And I think that's a fabulous question because I think it hits right to the core of a lot of what we're talking about. So um, does anyone want to jump in and, and answer that question from Joyce? Ira, I saw something in your eyes. The setup. I don't think there's anything particular about Yiddish. It's a language like all languages that, that expresses pain and sorrow and happiness and has a history. I think that I am interested particularly in Yiddish because fascists destroyed my relationship to it because I'm interested in ancestry and history, because I, um, I think that because I'm, I'm a diasporist Jew who's interested in, um, who's interested in how Jews live and have lived all over the world. And that, um, like, I think that assimilation into whiteness carries a lot of problems and that part of unlearning white supremacy is understanding distinctiveness I think that, um, uh, which is different than like specialness or chosenness. I don't know, whatever. How many fights can I get into tonight? Um, uh, and um, uh, I think that like I, there's just so much incredible material that was created and that um, like, like a language is a door into a world that, um, that, uh, you know, like, um, like was, yeah, that assimilation and 
assimilation into, into whiteness in America was an attempt to close. Or in my family, assimilation in, in, into whiteness in Europe also. Um, I don't know. In some ways, that's a little glib. Um, also, you, you start learning a language and it, the, treasures, the treasures of what's there present themselves to you. Um, and, you know, I just want to like shout out that I'm very inspired by like a, like a friend of mine, Jenny Romaine, who, who's study, like studying and working yeah. with her showed me how like, like the what fun and queer magic and, um, and like really revolutionary stuff that we can do with, with that language. But there's also incredible conservatism and um, all kinds of other stuff that happens in that language. I think that Yiddish like holds a particular diaspora um, in some form of specificity and it's not um, special in the way that it holds many different languages within it um, and is sort of a, a braided and a layered language, but I think it makes that a little bit more visible than some other languages. Um, and also I think I think our relationship to Yiddish is about um, the way that we like claw back to it in a in a sort of return for those of us who um, you know have a broken line to it and had to work to return to it um, or have a have a complicated relationship to it as well um, and um, I think. Like one of the origin stories for, for why Brivola is named Brivola is that we realized that so many of us had these family letters um, and also that we were sort of thinking about Yiddish as a way of like choosing ancestors and figuring out how to get correspondence from the histories that we needed to in this moment and then to also give back and return um, return some of those letters by singing some of these songs. Um, and so, you know, the letters that um, we have um, come from histories of um, incredible grief and loss um, and, and, and the sort of like birth of fascism as we understand it. Um, so the letters that we still have, um, tell the story of how much we've lost. Um, and also we were looking for letters for, le for like all that was built also, um, and to be able to have both of those things. Um, so that's like another why Yiddish. Thank you, Maya. Um, I'm gonna go now to like a, a live question, someone who raised their virtual hand so we're going to go to a uh, Jocelyn Cooper uh, who wanted to ask a question. So Jocelyn, if you're still there, you just have to click on mute and you can go ahead and ask your question. Jocelyn's still there. They might have had their hand up for a while. Going once, going twice, Jocelyn. OK, well, maybe we'll come back to Jocelyn in a bit. Uh, I know one person was just asking, because people have a lot of great kind of very specific questions about, someone was asking Ira about the uh, the person that you just mentioned, but maybe you type that question in. Um, let's see. Okay, I lost that one. Um, We'll come back. We'll come back to questions in a little bit. It's funny, like moderating and okay. I see one other person with their hand up. Um, this is. We'll go to Perry. So Perry, if you want to just unmute your mic and you can ask your question. Perry, are you there? All right. Fun with technology, Perry. You might have to see if your mic is working. You just see you muted yourself. Come on, Perry, you can do it. Okay, we might have to come back to Perry too. Um, well, well, we'll have a little bit more time for questions in a little bit. I would love to hear some more music. I'm sure many of our folks in the audience would. Um, Ira, do you wanna play another song? All right. Sure.
So what you got for us now? This song is by me and Rabbi Ephraim Waxman. It's called Wichtig. important. Wichtig is a Shabbos Kodesh, a Gitter Woch, and a Gitter Kodesh. Wichtig is a Glattes Fore, Wichtig is a Blattgemore, Wuss is Wichtig and Wuss is Nest, and Tor nicht werden zu mischt. What's important? Well, it's really important to have a good Shabbos. It's really important to have a good week and a good month. It's really important to have good reasoning. And it's really important to read a page of the Talmud. Okay, it's a very religious song, because I know that this is the audience. And um, basically, the most important thing is not to get it mixed up, what's important and what is not important. Don't get it twisted. Was is Schein und was is Mies? Was is Bitter und was is Sies? Shine is a jingle mit lange pious, mies is a rosha mit falsche dais, bitter is a krimis fura, and zis is a kazayas more. That's a little joke. Okay, so it's like what's beautiful, what's ugly, what's, what's bitter and what's sweet? Well, a boy with long pious, with long pious is beautiful, but a bad guy with false beliefs is ugly. Okay, very controversial. Okay. Skewed reasoning is bitter, and what's sweet is the little portion of um, the little portion of bitter herbs that you eat on Passover. <laughs> okay, what's important are the stories of tzaddikim. What's important is to have a sharp-witted insight into the Torah portion. What's important is a really nice esrik, and what's important is a pure heart. What's important? What's not important? Don't get it mixed up. Vechtik zenin supporet tzaddikim, avort after sedra romuzim anikim. Wichtig is an esrika shiner, wichtig is a harza reiner, was is wichtig and was is nicht, mit toren ist werden zu mischt. What's delicious is a warm Jewish song, what's important is doing a fellow human being a favor, what's important is something that lasts, and what's foolish is something that wastes your time or disappears with time. I don't know, I've had some, converse, some translation conversations about this. But don't get it mixed up. Geschmack is a warm Jewish lied. Wichtig is life in a toilet in a jeden. Wichtig is a Sach, was bleibt. Narisch is a Sach, was die Zeit vertreibt. Was is wichtig and was is nicht. Mit Toren nicht werden sie mischt. What's important is so often untranslatable. What's important is content that's relatable. It can feel important to behave correctly. There's just so many times I gotta live abjectly. Was is wichtig and was is nicht, mit Tor nicht werden sie mischt. Some guy who wrote the Talmud, he was something of a dunce. He said that hearing women sing was just like looking at their cunts. That's the reason on paper why women's voices don't appear in public when certain people have choices. But if you're not following any halakha, you don't have an excuse at all for booking all male show after all male show. It's incredibly boring. And we, we can see you. you know, it sucks. <laughs> That part of the show, you know, it's a Yiddish tradition to just talk, to just fit as many syllables as you can over the thing. This is not the first time tonight I have performed that tradition. Okay. What's bitter is a movement if nobody can dance. What's sweet is a relationship where no one wears the pants. What's awkward is when someone tries to guess my gender. <laughs> So what would a mediocre white man do? Well, what would you do if you never had been through every single fucking time that someone doubted a sweet idea that you had sprouted? What's important is hearing women sing. It's really an important thing. Was is wichtig and was is nicht? Mit nicht werden sie mischt. Yes, that one was amazing. Thank you. Um, 
So we're still getting some pretty good questions coming in in, in the Q&A. So I wanted to just jump back to a couple questions quickly before we get to another tune. Um, this is a really good kind of like advice on picking up music and Yiddish from Satchel, who asks, uh, any tricks or tips on learning to play klezmer? Satchel just got a clarinet and to sing in Yiddish. Anyone want to help Satchel out? To give yourself permission to do so. And I mean, maybe like to, to expand on that a little bit because we were talking about Klez Canada earlier, um, you know, of course, in the context of the Yiddishists against uh, prisons uh, contingent that you all brought to, to that demonstration. Um, maybe, I, like, I know that you all have been to Klez Canada. Just, just talk a little bit about that space and, and what's brewing there. Not everyone all at once. Well, uh, sorry, my audio settings are like relatively complicated. Okay. Oh, Michael Winograd, who's like yes. artistic director of that festival is here amazing. and doing an amazing job keeping that festival going during COVID. It's going to be from August 24th to 28th online. I'm sure you can find that information on their website or on Facebook and um, it's going to be tons of incredible programming and it's just like a major consortium of learning and <laughs> thanks out of echo it's an amazing consortium of learning and discovery um yeah i know all of us have taken a lot from that space and it's special um yeah i would also just say listen to recordings and read stuff and follow your heart and um Yeah, and just like keep doing it. Lots of opportunities to, through different programs, not just Clouds Canada, but there are, are lots of different programs uh, around the country, around the world, which I assume most of them are online at the moment. So like, hey, we can access things in other parts of the world that we, maybe we never could have before. Um, but like um, programs for learning, um, klezmer music, um, programs for learning Yiddish, um, so many different opportunities all over the place. Thank you. Yeah, be excited about what you don't know and name what you don't know and do it. And then people will come and be like, I'd love to hold you and help you in that. And then you'll be like, oh, thank you. Right on. I also see a lot of people are at like throwing suggestions and resources in the chat too, which is great that you know, folks can share that way. Um, let's come back to Brivole and we'll hear another tune. Now I know um, you all gave me an option of what we <laughs> could do. Uh, I might use my moderator privilege Ooh. and because I really want to hear Bread and Roses, if that's cool. You know, you get to do what you want. We'll, we'll tell, shall we tell everyone what the options were? You could do that. I might still decide what I want to decide, but. Oh yeah, you decide. <laughs> but so, so um, we've been singing Bread and Roses for a long time um, and we've craved um, a Yiddish version of Bread and Roses for a very long time. And Steph finally found one for us and we are indebted and Steph is going to tell the story. Oh, except that I don't have my notes with me. So I'm going to do my best to remember. Uh, okay. Last summer we were, um, Brivola had just played a show in Montreal after Clubs Canada and someone came up to me after the show and said that she was part of a theater company that, um, a Yiddish theater company in Montreal and I'm blanking on the name. Um, and and they translated bread and roses into yiddish and because this whole time um we've been singing this song for years and years in english wondering like well this this english song was written like in the early 1900s when there was such a strong yiddish uh labor movement labor organizing presence like wasn't this song translated into yiddish back then and like no one could find a copy like maybe it never was or if it was like n no one could find 
a copy that existed. So this theater company, this Yiddish theater company in Montreal did a production of something. Um, oh man. Is I, it Dora Wasserman Yiddish theater? Yes. Thank you. Ask the chat. Okay, great. Yes. Um, and they, for a production of a show they did, they translated Bread and Roses into Yiddish and they shared, they very gracefully shared the, their translation with us so that we could incorporate the Yiddish um, translation into the English version that we've been singing for years. And what you won't hear, but maybe you can look for it later, um, is that the lovely and generous uh, Yiddishist Amelia Glazer um, sent Brevila a copy of her, um, like the, the published version of her dissertation, um, maybe like six months ago, um, which is a compilation of um, sort of commie anarchist uh, Yiddish poet collective called Prolet Pen that probably spanned maybe the 20s through the 40s in New York City. Um, and she was like, when I was translating these poems, I just always thought of them as songs. And I have plenty of like klezmer friends, but no one will make them into songs. And we were like, well, well, maybe we, we, we would try and make them into songs, Amelia. And so she sent us her book. Um, and one of the poems that we found is called Spanish Viglied. And it's a poem that was written during the Spanish Civil War and the resistance to Franco. Um, and it's a lullaby um, to the children of the Spanish Civil War whose parents were out fighting Franco and trying to retake Madrid. Um, and so we set it to a tune by the revolutionary singer in Nicaragua, Norma Elena Gadea, who has had written a song in, in the midst of their struggle um, that was also a lullaby to the fighters' children. Um, so those were the options. Okay. Well, we'll we'll definitely we'll definitely hear one. We might we might even have time for both. You never know. Um, so let's uh, let's do bread and roses right here from Brivola. Can you make it full screen? In a chain of hell. Sorry, I just want to make sure it's working. Was it was that not working very well? I think if you put it on full screen, then it'll work better. Okay. Okay. Here, we'll what we'll do. Sorry, the technology is a little bit funny, but we'll uh, I'll try it one more time. All right, here we go. So. I'll put it back to the beginning. Can, does it seem like you guys could see that all right? Okay, here we go. When we are coming on my shearing in a shame of hell, dog, if I'm going to kill a million in a toys and shops of shock, Bapul serin mich trauen, wenn die Sonne raus gesprungen, war die Menschen herren singen, reut und reusen, reut und blumen. Wenn wir kommen und marschieren, war Männer euch kämpft men, weil Freuen sind und Brieder, mam es seinen mir gewinnen. Zwei von uns kein Schweiß nicht drinnen, von Geburt bis Ende Leben. Herz erhungern, euch Körper, geht uns Bräut und geht uns Blumen. Wenn wir gehen, marschieren, bringen wir bessere Tag. Weil wo starker mir die Freuen wird, als starker euch die Welt. Und Schlaferei und Leidekeers, aber Sen genießt nur einer, tanzt mit dem Guss von Leben, Bräut und Reusen, Bräut und Blumen. As we go marching, marching, in the beauty of the day, a million darkened kitchens, a thousand mill of gray, 
are touched with all the radiance that a sudden sun discloses. For the people here are singing bread and roses, bread and roses. As we go marching, marching, we battle to for men. For patriarchy hurts us all, and it has got to end. Our lives shall not be sweated from birth until life closes. Hearts starve as well as bodies. Give us bread, but give us roses. As we go marching, marching, unnumbered women dead. Go riding through our singing Their ancient call for bread Small art and love and beauty Their drudging spirits new Yes, it is bread we fight for But we fight for roses too As we go marching, marching The people hear our call the rising of the women means the rising of us all. No more the drudge and idler, ten that toil where one reposes, but a sharing of life's glories, bread and roses, bread and roses. <laughs> Amazing. Rivale right there again with bread and roses. Um, let's let's do the other one right before we we we'll hear one more from Jeff, who just got back from the green room. Um, let me let me just cue up the other one and remind us that the name of the, the other tune we're gonna hear. Spanish big lead. Literally cradle song. Okay, so I'm just gonna cue that one up. Here we go. Zweift der Wind durch unser Dach, Himmel sind sich auf der Nacht. Kind, mein Kind, aufgeschlafen. Soll der Wind dir sein wie Wein, Wald und Feld, der Teut verhirrt. Mamen quält, nicht mehr kein Milch. Tate ist in Schlacht weg. Mame wiegt, a weg mit Schreck. Korn, Weiz, wart auf den Schnitt. Tate steht hinter Madrid. Schreck sich nicht, mein Teilkind. Tate geht. Madrid von Hint, da dreht dein liebe Stadt von Faschis, fass modern Trott. Kind, mein Kind, aufgeschlafen, soll der Wind dir sein wie Wein. Amazing. Thank you again for that. And um, these, these are all brand new Brivole tunes. Uh, well, maybe not brand new in the sense of like new, but I think first time that, that you're sharing them with the public. Am I right in saying that? And maybe this is a good time to just remind folks as well too, because I, I meant to say this at the beginning. I forgot. There was a lot I wanted to say. Um, I think it's really, really important to support artists in these times. Like these are not easy times. Um, we're, again, we're used to going to concert halls and bands are used to touring and, and that's not happening. And we're also just used to like going on Spotify and, and clicking play. And, and I just saw like, I mean, maybe, maybe this should be common knowledge or obvious, but Spotify apparently play, pays artists like 0 0.0004 cents per stream. So, um, you know, maybe if we can get 100,000 people to stream 
one of Jeff Berner's albums, we can get 50 cents in his pocket. That's not the way to do it. Um, I think uh, people should, should seek out if you've appreciated the music. Um, and so um, maybe just real quick, I don't know if, if you guys want to put in the chat or if you want to pop on, like if, if uh, where, where can people find Brivolet's music? I can put that in the chat, but we have a band camp. Uh, uh, what is that? I'll, I'll put the link in the chat. Or Brian got to it before I did. Thank you, Brian. Brian, and Lindsay, people can put um, things Bertard. in the chat for yeah. Jeff and Ira. That would be great. Mm -hmm. I, awesome. A quick shout out to Brian who put the link in the chat. He's the one who recorded our first album and recorded these videos for us. He's a darling friend. Great. So, you know, please do again, like, you know, like like at a show we'd be like there's the merch table in the back go pick up the cd i'm gonna say that proverbially i want i want people to check out all of these amazing artists who are sharing their time with us tonight um also as i was saying before if, you know if you support um events like this and if you support the work that ijv does you know the, the peace and justice the day-to-day -day anti racist anti-apartheid work uh that we're engaged in to build these global solidarity movements and these solidarity movements here at home, please do consider making a donation to, to IJV because it'll help us pay the artists uh, who are with us tonight and it'll help us cover our expenses. And like I said, hopefully bring more events like this. So you can do that on our website. It's ijvcanada.org slash donate. And again, like if you were going out to the concert hall tonight, you might like if it was like a DIY punk show, you might spend five bucks. You might spend 10 or 15 if it was like something, I don't know, where like you put on something with a collar maybe. Um, or maybe, you know, if like if you were going to the opera, you would spend $100. And I think this is more fun than going to the opera. So um, again, you know, you can think of it as your concert ticket because this event is free, but you know, nothing in life is actually free. Uh, okay, but don't yeah. shit talk the opera too much because I've been considering trying to translate some Rossini into Yiddish and I still want to do that. Nice. I, I would never shit talk the opera. That was not my intention. Um, Jeff, you want, you want to do another one? You still got your accordion by your side? Let's hear another tune. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing this a lot. Uh, a lot of people, I think, have been starting to play it uh, since uh, I think it was the Klezmatics recorded it, and uh, it's called Der Joch, and uh, uh, it uh, was written in Catalan, and I think Professor Yuri there in Montreal, uh, his last name jumped out of my head. You probably already all know him, but he, you know, Yappen. yeah, he did pretty good darn good translation into Yiddish on it, I think. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, Annie Cohen in London told me about this song. She said that she knew that she had documentation that Jews had sung this, the original song when they were fighting the fascists and stuff. So this is a kind of anti-fascist-y kind of party. So I thought, well, you know, it starts um, the story. Uh, there's a the narrator of the song. They're by the side of the road with their their granddad, and uh, you see a a horse on pulling a wagon, and it's got a yoke like on it. It's the, and the grandfather says that's like the yoke of oppression that we're living with. That's what he says. <laughs> Wir seinen gestanden in Sveien, es hat noch nicht getaugt. A Pferdl vorbei und ein Wogen, und hat dem Seiden gesorgt. Sie setzt so ab unser Rücken, dem schwer eisernen Joch. Kann man nicht gehen, nicht fliehen. Krieg man a bis on a stoch. But the grandfather says, zusammen, together, 
we can escape. It might take a while, but one of these days, that rotten old yoke is going to fall. So Stretch out my hands to them. Ich steh da wie am Oh, sorry. Es gehen nahe jinglich vorbei. Streck ich zu sei die Hand. And I sing for them my grandfather's song that he taught to me. Strech ich zu sei die Hand und sing vor sei dem Seidens Lied, was er hat mich gelernt. Zu sein kennt mir ad euch, so seine Show, a Tag, a Woche, er wird schon fallen, fallen, fallen. Das Wort der Alter Joch, als ich so ziehen in der Mitte und du so ziehen in der Seite, er wird schon fallen, fallen, fallen. Der Mord wäre mir bei Freiheit. Schön fallen, 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 der Mut wäre mir war frei. Thank you, Jeff. Um, as you were singing that, I just I, I wanted to show folks this uh, 
this little patch here. Um, again, my, my Yiddish is awful, but it's mir velen ze iber leben, or we will outlive them. And uh, these patches are sibile, where um, we're distributing these. And I want to give a shout out to my friend Avi, um, who helped me do a lot of the research for this show and, and helped me also get in touch with even with some of the artists and who gave me this patch, which I find really inspiring because, you know, maybe, maybe this, is, this is my closing thought, um, thinking about anti-fascism and klezmer is that we come from a people who survived a genocide where we weren't meant to continue to sing these songs. And yet the fact that we're here singing today is a testament to that resilience in much the same way that you know so many cultures of resistance have their own songs too right so it makes me think of all the folks out there today who are experiencing police brutality and we heard songs today about police brutality or we're experiencing gentrification and being displaced from their neighborhoods um, we're having those urban histories erased right from beneath their footsteps um, you know, indigenous folks on Turtle Island who are, who are having their, their land taken away on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that kind of, in a really beautiful way through this suffering, and we, again, we were talking a lot about grief with um, a song that Ira played earlier. I think that, you know, in grief, there is a lot of unity and a lot of uh, chance to come together um, and, and to build these bonds of solidarity that we need to be building on a daily basis, whether it's with folks in Palestine, whether it's with folks in the Black Lives Matter movement, whether it's with folks in indigenous movements and queer movements. And um, I know that through a lot of the songs that I heard tonight, that really resonated through my bones and, and through my core, as I, as I really hope that it did for a lot of you out there. So, so thank you to everyone for being here. Um, there were so many good questions too that people submitted and, and I don't think we're going to have time to get to all of them. But what I did do is I made notes of all the questions. Well, I didn't really make notes. I just took screen grabs. Same thing these days. Um, but I, I, I do have all of your questions. So, so what we will attempt to do in the coming days is, um, you know, may, maybe gather input from people because as we say here in Quebec, when we're out in the streets protesting, we say, ce n'est qu'un début, continuons le combat. So this is only a beginning. We, we continue the struggle. As I like to think that this event, I think was very unique in many ways and hopefully is just a beginning. It's, it's, it's a beginning of a conversation. So again, thank you so much to all of uh, our artists who are here. Thank you so much to the audience. And just to recap, we had uh, Ira Temple joining us from Brooklyn this evening. We had Stephanie and Maya from Brivole joining us from Seattle. And we had Jeff Berner joining us from Vancouver. Um, it was such an honor and such a pleasure. And I'm just wondering before we go, um, I don't, I don't want to have the last word necessarily. So if any of you want to leave us with any thoughts, if there's anything you want to plug or anything like that, um, now would be the time. Indeed, we will outlive them. Any other thoughts just before we go? Because if not, it's getting a little bit late here on the East Coast and even later on the Far East. So um, we will be, a lot of people ask questions about this. We will indeed be posting the full video of this um, in the coming days. It's going to be up on our website. Again, go to ijvcanada.org. It'll be up there. We'll share it on our social media. Do follow us on social media. Uh, we're on all of the social things in these weirdly unsocial times. Um, so thank you again for spending some of your Thursday evening with us. Thank you so much to all of our musicians and to everyone here, and we will see you again soon. Bye, folks.